I think it, you know, what a parent can do is a few things. One, if they are uh, having their, their son or daughter go to a preschool or a daycare or child care center is to ask questions about how are you teaching my child or daughter to learn how to read? And how are you going to go, go about teaching my child how to learn how to read and listen to them? And, and what you want to listen for is, you know, the basics for going into kindergarten. You want to know that children can name the letters, that children can... And, and there's a difference between uppercase and lowercase. And systematically starting with the uppercase and, and working then working with the lowercase is, is something many of the programs do. Uh, also, so, so being able to identify letters is, is really important. But I think one of the things that, uh, that many people uh, forget about is also the sounds that the letters make. And so it's really teaching, I think at that early stages, the sounds letters make and also working with not just the, 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 the spoken language, but also the written language. So how are they, they how, are, how are the programs, uh, inter- uh, how are the programs combining letter naming and letter sounds with actual writing and writing their name and sounding it out? And so all of those little things that uh, parents can do at home as well, which is you can al- always have a uh, flashcards, anyone can make them for the letters, right? So you can do flashcards at home. You can work with their child with in, in individual books, uh, identifying letters, but also sounds as well. And so, you know, it doesn't take fancy fancy programs to do the basics. So uh, if, I was a, if I was giving advice to a parent at home to, that has a two, three, and four-year-old and they're getting them ready for, for kindergarten, work on those uh, identifying letters, those uppercase and lowercase letters, and work on the sounds and making sure that we have that. You, and, and we all have, you know, many of us have access to the local libraries. Many of us have access to the, to the internet in some cases. And so, you know, if you're, you're unsure of, of that, you know, there's, there's plenty of research out there. There's plenty of understanding teachers, um, um, students and parents and community members can do. One of the things we've also done is engage our uh, local physicians as well to ask questions about reading and reading at home and how often are you doing it. Um, I think there's somewhat of a misnomer. Um, I think a lot of um, information out there is just read to your child and they'll pick it up. Reading to your child is great. It's great for bonding. It's great to show them and to model uh, reading behavior. Uh, but we want to take it beyond that. It's not just about reading at home. There's things that you can be doing while you're reading from uh, teaching, this, teaching, teaching your, your child that there's a direction that reading takes, uh, teaching your child that it goes from uh, uh, you know, left to right, up to down, uh, that there's a title of the book, that there's an author of the book, um, that there's concepts within the book, and to talk about that. And so it's just not about reading the words on the page and, and getting them excited. At the same time, you can t- be teaching them uh, concepts about, about print and about reading foundational skills.